Hello, my name is Dan Richardson. Welcome to the Dan Richardson Show. Today we'll be talking about why I love, or why I still like, The Force Awakens. Um, so The Force Awakens, of course, I'm going to assume that you have seen this film and know basically what it's about. Um, here is why I still like it despite all of its sort of issues. Uh, number one, I really like that uh, Ray and Finn basically just do feel like a duo. You know, they feel like the two protagonists of this franchise and I'm sure or of this film and I'm sure we kind of lose that by the end because um well there's a few theories. Either Disney is racist or China is racist and you look and Lucasfilm and all of them were just trying to get pandered to Chinese audiences. Who knows? It, it's probably the second theory. Um, but yeah, it is unfortunate what they do to Finn because I really like him. He's probably my favorite character of this particular film because he's given a personality and he's sort of allowed to grow. And unfortunately in The Last Jedi, I kind of feel like he kind of goes through the same character arc, just in a different way. Um, but that might just be a matter of opinion. Um, and Ray, I think both John Boyega and um, Daisy Ridley do an amazing job playing the two characters. And Ray is instantly, I think, likable. Um, is the ultimate answer to who are her parents and why is she so powerful kind of lackluster and, you know, disappointing? Yes, absolutely. But this movie does a really good job at making you ask those questions and wanting to know those answers and that's i think one of the strengths of this film actually um but one of its flaws is that it is supremely shackled to the original trilogy um they they talk all over the bottom pages about how they wanted to make this feel like star wars how they wanted to harken back to the original trilogy they were using practical sets they just wanted everything to feel real and tangible and only really use cgi when they had to and of course the whole idea that the heroes are a small scrappy force trying to well at first stop essentially a terrorist organization and that turns into by the next film a galaxy-wide occupational force is just kind of lame and i can kind of see why george lucas when he originally saw right uh force awakens saying that there was nothing new and that they didn't do anything interesting because this film is good. It's my seventh favorite Star Wars film. And I think it is a good crowd-pleasing film. And you go back um, seven years ago. And basically every YouTuber is going to say that they love this film. Sure, there were naysayers. But this film was good. But I think and still is a very enjoyable experience. But I think its problem is that it tried too hard to bring us back to the original trilogy when what it really should have done was evolve but unfortunately these is these are the three films we got in the sequel trilogy none of them oh well last jedi arguably tries to spe spearhead us into a new direction and but you know that movie is in my opinion kind of boring and i didn't necessarily like it but I'm always hopeful that I'll have some epiphany watching it and it will be great. Um, number three is like Kylo. I really, I really love Kylo. I think he ends up being the best character of the trilogy, mainly because Adam Driver does such an exceptional job playing him and also because it, it really feels like Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams really had a grasp on who this character was and molded this character to be the best version of himself that he could be. Yeah, he's kind of a Darth Vader clone, but he does end up kind of being interesting and he plays a part in probably the best scene of Rise of Skywalker. And that's another thing. Um, This film is, I think, unfortunately, and it was kind of obvious um, on the onset, this film lived or died by its sequels. And unfortunately, Despite the people who love Last, you know, Last Jedi, 
this film unfortunately dies by its sequel. And that is the unfortunate truth. Um, Han Solo, Harrison Ford does an exceptional job with this film. And yeah, sure, he only really did this for the paycheck, as he says before, and he also only agreed to do this film because he knew that Han Solo would die, and he hates Han Solo for burning passion. I have seen at least two films from the last decade where he seemingly cares, um, that being Blade Runner and Call of the Wild, two exceptional films that I highly recommend, and one of them is a little longer than the other, so watch Call of the Wild. It's pretty good. Um, I've seen it like three times. But, yeah, like, Harrison Ford does a really good job. And you can tell that he just goes right back into playing this character that, granted, he hates. But he does a good job going straight back into this character. And, um, some people say that he stagnates. Really, I think he does stagnate, possibly due to some emo emotional immaturity that he has. But you can tell that they did think slightly about okay, who is this guy 30 years from now? He's a lot less cynical and a little bit more, um, he believes in the force a little bit more. And I like that quite a bit. Um, ultimately, the legacy that this film and that the whole um, first 10 years of the uh, Disney era has sort of presented us is interesting. I think um, a lot of, the triumphs, you know, Bad Batch, The Force Awakens, Rogue One, Andor, which just happened recently, Rebels. I think a lot of those successes can be absolutely contributed to all the great filmmakers and storytellers who have worked on these on the Disney era of Star Wars, including Kathleen Kennedy. But I think also a lot of the unfortunate failures of the Disney era can also be contributed to the storytellers and filmmakers and especially Kathleen Kennedy. Now, this is only the first 10 years of the of the Disney era and it's looking a little wobbly, but let's just remember that Lucas had the had the reins for like 35 years and then he gave them gave the reins. He sold the reins for like 14 million dollars. Or 14 billion dollars to Disney so yeah like is this a perfect trilogy no has everything in the Disney era overall been perfect no but there's some been some absolutely great things and I think that this is just gonna be one of them is this absolutely amazing no but it is entertaining and of course I've dived into how amazing Rogue One is just last year, around the same time, actually. Um, and yeah, that's that's great. And I can't wait to see how the Disney era of Star Wars looks 